Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy, rainy day here in the end times here on this gloomy Monday morning, September 10th, 2018, here in paradise in an undisclosed location deep in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. You can probably hear the rain swollen river outside of this cabin. But good lord, guys, another Monday morning in the end times. And uh, I could probably do a five part Doomer headlines. So I'm going to try to make this into two parts. And we're going to start with a few of the climate change uh, headlines in the mainstream and alternative media. And there's a chance my battery is going to run out in the middle of this rant. If it does, I'm not going to start it over. Uh, but I will come back with part two here in a minute. Okay, I think Paul Beckwith has already gone over this uh, in depth, this story in depth. You, so you can find this over on Paul's channel as well from the Russian Times. I'm sorry, from the Moscow Times. Russian ministry warns of coming environmental apocalypse fueled by climate change. Yes. <clears throat> Russia's environmental ministry has published a 900-page report that paints an apocalyptic future for the country due to climate change with consequences including epidemics, drought, mass flooding, and hunger. Yes, while Russia has been slated to reap economic benefits from a modest rise in global temperatures, which are expected to open navigation in the Arctic and allow for more economic activity in the winter, the country <clears throat> has allocated about $22 billion on a new environmental program uh, to promote air pollution reduction, reforestation, and recycling and anyway they break this all down deaths from environmental disasters in Russia have increased 11 fold since 2016 temperatures in Russia increased at more than double the rate of the world's average uh, greenhouse gases uh, driven by economic and population growth, reached record levels last year. Yep. Um, quote, this has led to unprecedented <coughs> levels of atmospheric concentrations of CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide. Uh, and then they <clears throat> will look at the future dangers. Good Lord. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to choose one. <clears throat> Melting permafrost in and around the Russian Arctic could lead to, quote, dangerous chemical, biological, and radioactive substances entering the human habitat. Do you think so? And then they actually talk about <clears throat> the deformation of railways. Uh, anyway, guys, as I say, I think Paul might have more on this, but let's go from the shithole country of uh, Russia to our own shithole country for the no shit Sherlock. Where am I? Ah, shit. I'll have my buttons for the second half of this rant. <clears throat> no shit Sherlock story. New wildfire rips through Northern California. A new wildfire was raging in Northern California on Friday, having already devastated, <clears throat> I think we're up over 40,000 acres and continuing to spread. Yes, <clears throat> dubbed the Delta Fire. The blaze was the latest outbreak to hit the region 
this summer and was said by officials to have been triggered by arson, authorities had to close Interstate 5 and issued evacuation orders to areas in the path of the expanding conflagration. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure there's about a, uh, a dozen wildfires burning in California, but if you want to look at where the new wildfires from hell are getting ready to erupt, it will be Australia, which is just heading in to its spring and summer. And they did have a little bit of rain in Australia last week, but <clears throat> despite the rain, Australia's drought extends. A devastating drought that has left Australian farmers struggling to stay afloat is set to persist despite widespread and significant rain last month, the authorities have said. Grazers in eastern Australia have been battling a long period of severe conditions that have turned green pastures brown and forced some ranchers to sell down or shoot their stock. Yes, uh, some 99.8% of the state of New South Wales remains in drought, 57% of Queensland. Uh, there you go. While droughts are not uncommon in Australia, the length and severity of the dry conditions this time have placed enormous strain on farmers in the eastern states. Okay, I guess this is our whole shithole planet. Uh, this is from the Atlantic Magazine Science Pages, looking at author William T. Volman's uh, latest book, The Most Honest Book About Climate Change Yet. Volman's latest opus is brilliant but it offers no comfort to its re readers. Yes. Uh, anyway, we got to get through. Uh, this is the book Carbon Ideologies, uh, where uh, his main character lives in the future under radically different circumstances, inhabiting a, quote, hotter, more dangerous, and biologically diminished planet. Yes. Uh, Volma envisions her turning the pages of his climate change opus within the darkened recesses of an underground cave in which she has sought shelter from the unendurable heat, the plagues, droughts, and floods, the methane fireballs racing across boiling oceans. Because the soil is radioactive, she subsists on insects and recycled urine and regards with implacable contempt her ancestors who, as Volman tells her, quote, enjoyed the world we possessed and deserved the world we left you. There you go. Uh, 1,268 pages. Good Lord. And this is a good, well, this is the longest book review I might have ever, I might have ever read, uh, read in my entire life. Good God. Uh, anyway, let's get to the bottom line. <clears throat> the planet's atmosphere will change, but human nature will not. 
Volna's meager wish is for future readers to appreciate that they would have made the same mistakes we have. This might seem a humble ambition for a project of this scope, but only if you mistake carbon ideologies for a work of activism. Volman's project is nothing so conventional. His letter to the future is a suicide note. He does not seek an, inter an intervention, only acceptance. If not forgiveness, then at least acceptance that, you know, that we are so fucked. All right, what's going on over there in Paris? More than 18,000 people march in Paris to show support for climate change ahead of California summit. I do not have my bullshit detector button with me, but you can hear it ringing off. More than 18,000 people march Saturday in Paris as part of an international mobilization to show su popular support for urgent measures to combat climate change in advance of a San Francisco summit. Yes. Anyway, uh, enough of that bullshit. What is big oil up to today? Big Oil, this is from the Associated Press, Big Oil asks government to protect it from climate change. Yes. Uh, anyway, it would have been, here we go, a Dateline Port Arthur, Texas. As the nation plans new defenses against the more powerful storms and higher tides expected from climate change, one project stands out, <coughs> an ambitious proposal to build a nearly 60-mile spine of concrete seawalls, earthen barriers, floating gates, and steel levees on the Texas Gulf Coast. Uh, the plan is focused on a stretch of coastline that runs from Louisiana to industrial enclaves south of Houston that are home to one of the world's largest concentration of petrochemical facilities, including most of Texas's 30 refineries, uh, and which is all going underwater. And so all we need is $12 billion of taxpayers' money to build the new coastal spine. There you go. So pony up, people. Big oil needs you like you need big oil. So we're going to spend $12 billion to put a coastal spine to keep one of the biggest stretches of hell on earth uh, out of the rising seas. Again, you know what button I'm pushing. And take a while to guess which button I would be pushing now. Historic Alaska fuel shipment reaches North Slope. Huh. An Alaska company says changing ice conditions. Changing ice conditions, yes called the obliteration, the disappearance of ice in the North Slope area, have allowed it to make a bulk fuel delivery to Prudhoe Bay by barge for the first time. Yes, the Virgin... Yes, the Virgin journey carried two million gallons of fuel. Yes. Uh, there you go. And we all know what that's about. Okay. I love the name of this headline, Goats and Soda. Goats and Soda. 
Yes, little log, are you having a bad morning over there? You're not feeling good? You need to puke? A scientist dreams up a plan to stop the Sahara Desert from expanding. Ah, the Sahara Desert is expanding and has been expanding for at least a century, I think for like 50, 45, or 50 centuries. It's a phenomenon that seems impossible to stop, but it has not stopped at least one group of scientists from dreaming of a way to do that. And their proposed solution is a grand scheme that involves covering vast areas of the Sahara Desert with solar panels and windmills. We're just going to carpet the entire Sahara Desert with solar panels and windmills. And we all know what button that gets. Okay. If you do not know why I included this next story in a climate change meltdown roundup rant, uh, you have not been listening to my rants recently or were having a failure to communicate. Unrest intensifies in Iraq is Iranian consulate an oil facility storm. Civil unrest fueled by anger against perceived corruption and misrule by Iraq's political elite intensified across the south of the country on Friday as protesters stormed the Iranian consulate in Basra while others briefly took workers hostage at a nearby oil field. Um, Let's see if they ever mention this, uh, the terms climate change uh, in this story. Anyway, uh, this is a long, involved story. Uh, it would have been nice if the reason for this was mentioned. Anyway. <clears throat> But we're going to wind up here because I got a lot to deal with today. Anybody who thinks that uh, the Anthropocene just started with the Industrial Revolution, that humans had nothing to do with climate change, and starting to about a couple of hundred years ago, think again. Ancient farmers spared us from glaciers, but profoundly changed Earth's climate. Yes, millennia ago, ancient farmers cleared land to plant wheat and corn, potatoes and squash. They flooded fields to grow rice. They began to raise livestock. And unknowingly, they may have been fundamentally altering the climate of the earth. A study published in the journal Scientific Reports provides new evidence that ancient farming practices led to a rise in the atmospheric emission of the heat trapping gases, carbon dioxide, and methane, a rise that has continued ever since. Unlike the trend at any other time in Earth's geologic history. Mm. It also shows that, out with that without this human influence, by the start of the Industrial Revolution, the planet would have likely been headed for another ice age. There you go. Uh, but the ancient roots of farming produced enough carbon dioxide and methane to thwart a new ice age, but of course the trend has been continuing and here we go to who knows where. But anyway, 
Uh, I have got to wrap up this week's climate, today's climate change meltdown roundup wrap and come back with part two where I have about 30 damn stories to go over about how uh, this planet's going to hell in the handbasket with no help from climate change coming right up on this gloomy day. Smoke them if you got them and we all know why. Bye guys.